Welcome everyone back to the channel. Welcome everyone back to the channel. Today we got a new post from Call of Duty talking about everything that is going to be in zombies and in the bottom I'm also going to have some gameplay footage for you as well and if it runs out we'll also show the gameplay release trailer and also the cinematic trailer that was released in in the trailer but this is going to be a live reaction to all the news that is coming into Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, so at first it's telling us that this is pretty much going to be an MW3, uh, a Modern Warfare DMZ experience, but with also zombies, but also they talked about how our menu screen and lobby screen is going to work with us having uh, a way to customize our, our gear, so progression of the battle pass, the store, but also it will show us the story missions that we have completed and can continue on with at the bottom of our screen before we jump into our next game. Then we also, it shows us our image of our operator screens, similar to how the DMZ mode is with each different screen being a different operator with all the gear that we have being our backpack, UAV, uh, armor plate, gas mask, quick, re uh, not quick revive, a self revive kit, telling us that there are uh, two operators that we can earn for the zombies mode by completing challenges, being Ripper, Ripper and Scorcher, as they they have right here. But uh, each of our operators can be chosen and be customized with five different equipment slots. And the gear that we have found from previous missions, including the Kill Streets armor, gas mask, and our medical items being uh, quick, not quick revives. I want to say quick revives because it's it's a self revive, but if you're solo, quick revive does end up reviving you. So I'm now interested to see how quick revive will work in the game, considering we do have uh, self reses in the game from DMZ Warzone mode. Next, we got a breakdown of our rut sats. Which they can be filled up with uh, essential acquisitions that we find in the battlefield or craft via schematics. Initially, there are going to be up to five open slots on a small rut sack. This looks like a large rut sack. After our first mission, providing we found either acquisitions or schematics, we can add those items to our rut sacks. Now, this is talking about loadouts. This pretty much is going to be the same way as the DMZ mode did. I just now saw there was an ad for that. Ignore that. <laughs> but we will pretty much have the same ones from DMZ jumping into Modern Warfare Zombies. Pretty much the same. Tacticals, lethals being stun grenades, smoke grenades, a scattered mine, detroy grenades, shots, shot sticks, a stem, and an experimental gas grenade with our lethals being a frag grenade, claymores, throwing knives, thermites, prots mines, a drill charge, stick grenade, sticky grenade, which is a Simtet, C4. Oh, there's also a breacher drone. So pretty much all the equipment that is in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 is pretty much going to be our equipment and lethals. But now we got a confirmed look at all the field upgrades that are going to be in in the game. With that being Energy Mind, Frenzied Guard, Healing Aura, Frost Blast, Ether Shroud, and Tesla Storm. Which I originally called Lightning Links. But it looks like it's going to be called Tesla Storm. But let's break down all these field upgrades with... Energy mine being uh, a me having a medium recharge with a s that spawns an explosive dealing uh, dealing massive damage to enemies who set who set it off. Then we got frenzied guard, which is on a slow recharge, which repairs armor to full and forces all enemies in the area to target us for 10 seconds. And it, and enemies killed repairs our armor during this time. So I think this. In my opinion, will be very good if you're having trouble finding armor in game. That this will definitely be very useful to use to make sure you're getting your armor back quicker. Next, we got healing aura, 
which was apparently very popular when the gameplay was being tested, and it heals all players immediately, even the ones in last stand. So this pretty much can act as a revive way instead of just having to fully revive your teammate. If you use this equipment, you can revive your teammates with it. Next will be Frost Blast, which uh, deals damage to enemies within an initial blast zone and slows them and enter and that that really slows them once they've entered the affected area then we have ether shroud making its return being a medium recharge where we become invisible to zombies as it was in cold war now the new one being tesla storm which gives us a slow recharge for 10 seconds uh connecting lightning to to other players and stunning and damaging normal enemies it also ends up increasing the damage to the zombies when you shoot them it doesn't mention that here but in gameplay testing it sent my kid dealt more damage to the zombies as well next there how we can deal with our acquisitions finding our acquisitions and stomatics just once we return from our first few missions we will be able to place acquisitions into our rut sats for use during our during our next uh, deployments into Modern Warfare Zombies, we can also start by crafting our own acquisitions at the Stomatics crafting locations in the lobby between each drop. So that looks like something we can be able to do with crafting our Wonder Weapons, like the Ray Gun and the Wonder Waff. And in this menu options screen, it also gives us a nice image of, it looks like the Mangler and uh i can't remember what that one boss is for from cold war but acquisitions acquisitions these are single use items that can give you a, an advantage on the on the battlefield acquisitions acquisitions you find in etsville with in your rutsack can be added to your acquisition stash within your rutsack menu stomatics these are highly sought after plans that permanently allow you to craft acquisitions that you can add to your rut set. Stomatics have a cooldown period after which they can be brought into the exclusion zone. This is a, it looks like a menu for our acquisition stat, stashes and our stomatics that we can craft. The following types of acquisitions that can be found and used or crafted if stomatics are located and all a rarity value associated with them daunting how difficult they are to find and the level improvements they bring to the weapon or item they affect. Well, it looks like there's Ethereum, so Ethereum is making a return from Cold War Zombies, which was the way we were able to upgrade our perks and field upgrades, so it looks like we're getting those back. And also it looks like we have Ether Tools, which will be able for us to upgrade our weapons that we have in our Contraband Stash and our uh, and our um, our insured slots. Don't know how hard it was to, for me to say that. The dark ether acquisition element is used to con con or conjunction with the crafting schematics that to bolster our weaponry, our raw and refined Ethereum crystals. These are used to upgrade. Your patch punch weapons to levels one, one and two, repeatedly, respectively. Uncommon, rare, epic Ethereum tools. These upgrade your weapon held to a rare form. The rare, the rarer the form, the more impressive damage the weapon inflicts. So it looks like the Ethereum crystals are used to patch punch our weapons, and the Ethereum cr tools are used to upgrade our our weapons from. Uh, the the color the color scheme of weapons being uh, the common which was green blue purple and but it doesn't look like it's going to be able to get us up to gold unless that's what the legendary one is that looks like how we're going to be able to get everything upgraded nets are perks that they that they showed sadly the the vest gloves boots and gear system and is not available in zombies as a multiplier instead we receive a permanent boost throughout our mission unless we eventually fully die to a very to various in-game attributes by finding or crafting them 
being the perks that we can find and craft. Which obviously we got Deadshot Daiquiri, Death Perception, Elemental Pop, Juggernaut, PhD Flopper, Quick Revive, Speed Cola, Stamina Up, and Tombstone. Which Deadshot Daiquiri is aiming down sights, moving your enemy, moving to the enemy's critical locations, increasing uh, critical damage on the enemies. Death Perception, Obscured Enemies, Chess, Resources, and item drops are more easily spotted, so this will be very useful in trying to find all those chests and resources that we need to Etzfil with to upgrade all of our weapons and such. And then we got Judd, which increases maximum health. Sadly, it doesn't tell us how much health it increases our player's health by, which I wish it did. I know someone in the comments in one of my previous videos asked what it would increase our health to. They still do not tell us, but we I think the base health is 150, but knowing what Black Ops 4 was with the 150 health, and then they increased it to 200 being for our fourth hit, that being like a Judd-like thing, that's what I would suspect Judd gives us an extra 50 hit points. And then we got PhD Flopper, diving to a prone triggers a an explosive explosion. The explosion increases the higher you fall. Immunity to, from fall damage while, while diving, immunity from area affected damage from weapons you are using. So this is pretty much our classic flopper from from Black Ops 1 that we all used. So the ray gun be very effective in using with flopper and other explosive weapons that we can jump into with with the rocket launchers. This will be a very useful part to get all those camo challenges done. That way we can not take any splash damage from them. And Quick Revive reduces the health regeneration delay by 50% and reduces the time it takes to revive an ally. So there isn't anything about Quick Revive being a self-revive. So I guess we're just going to have to find our own self-revives to then get Quick Revive. Next we got Speed Cola, which when we drink it, it just makes our reload. And we can also put armor plates back on faster. Stamina up increases our run and sprint duration. And then Tombstone. On death, you create a Tombstone stash at that location containing your backpack inventory in the next game. So pretty much if you die, you're going to have to return to where you died in your next game to get that Tombstone back. I was wondering how they were going to be able to place that Tombstone into the game. And where it was going to spawn. So it looks like it's just going to spawn where you died in your last game. So you can then go back in your next game and get it back. Ammo mods. Which obviously we got Brain Rot returning. Cryo Freeze returning. Dead Wire. Napalm Burst. And Shatter Blast. All returning from Cold War into Modern Warfare Zombies. And of course it doesn't give us any information about these uh, ammo equipments. But the weapon that we currently are holding can be further augmented with these ammo modifications for the exact effect that the mod brings to a battle. Why not test them? It says why not test them out in the exclusion zones once we find we we can either find them or craft them in the in the menu. Of course it has wonder weapons. It looks like obviously we don't have the ray gun, the scorcher, and the wonder waff, but they do not give us any information on what these Wonder weapons are. We do not have any information on that as it shows here. But located locate the necessary and devilishly difficult to find schematics and you are able to craft craft some of the most important arcan, arcane and powerful weaponry you've ever seen. The wonder weapons are available at, at launch are currently and they don't tell us obviously, but it looks like it's gonna be the ray gun, the scorcher and the Wonder Waff. And then we got a mission overview of the ats, tiers, and rewards with by completing completing tasks within missions and we and receive unlock missions and rewards. Complete missions within a tier and unlock missions and rewards. Completing all the tiers to finish an at and re and received unlocked missions and rewards. By completing all ats we will receive a reward and continue to uncover the mysteries Plating the exclusion zone prior prior to storyline con continuation at season one. So it looks like we will get a reward for completing all three ats in 
in the mode but they do not tell us what this is and it looks like our story will continue in season one which they did say they wanted to add an easter egg in modern warfare zombies but there wouldn't be one at launch so completing these tier at missions will be the way for us to continue our story and it looks like we'll get a good re probably a good reward for completing all three of these ads and then there's mission parameters let's see obviously so pretty much it's almost all of dmz that we have i'll leave it here real quick just so you all can read it for yourself but it looks like it's just all like dmz and zombies coming into one but with our three high threat zones being low medium and high and they can be done in whatever way we find whichever way we please and then it shows a the mega abomination the mangler and it says within within an appointment your tap map displays a variety of interesting game features and some of the most important ones are detailed below which are the buy stations which allows us to purchase helpful items such as teal streets gas masks and other essentials as well as selling our unwanted items that we collected it looks like we got perk machines that allow us to purchase our perks so these will be all around the map and then we got pack a punch machines that upgrade our current weaponry usually these will usually be usually the ammunition and the damage departments for a price so whatever zone you're going to be in will determine your uh, tier of pack a punch and how much it's going to cost you to get that pack a punch and it looks like wall buys will be making a return with the outlines of the weaponry that you can find on the walls of various buildings throughout the exclusion zone, interact and purchase the weapons as needed. And then the mystery bots is making a return with these offer an exciting randomly generated prize, likely a weapon of variety, varying variety and occasionally a wonder weapon with them not telling us anything about the wonder weapons. And it says nothing gets in, nothing gets out of this exclusion zone. And with that, guys, if you don't want to miss any upcoming Modern Warfare 3 content like this, please make sure you, you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any gameplay that's coming out on Friday and future gameplay throughout the year. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and let me know if you guys like this live look, look in from the blog post or if you like the other two videos that will pop up on screen right now. And with that, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.